the Super Hornet. It's extremely reliable. I'm very confident. I know it's going to do what I ask it to do. First of all, the thing can work its tail off. It is an absolute workhorse. It's incredible wealth of mission capabilities it makes it uh, very usable in really any theater. It's got a lot of systems that allow us to see what's going on around us and it feeds that information to us so that we can make our own decisions inside the cockpit. I'd say the number one thing that sets the Super Hornet apart from really any other platform is its uh, controllability. You can fly the thing in almost any regime of flight and uh, it's, it's really easy to manage. It'll get you out of a jam if you need to. Uh, specifically if you're one-on-one -on -one fighting in a close arena, we call dog fights, you know, a knife fight in a telephone booth. So being able to have that, that one extra maneuver that the other guy can't do could be the difference. The heads-up display is obviously the tool of choice that, that makes it a lot easier. When I want to put it in a certain piece of sky or turn it in a certain way, I don't have to look down into the cockpit taking my eyes off of what's going on around me to do it. I have buttons at, right at my fingertips ready to go, and I know exactly what it's going to give me when I move the stick or the throttles, which is really cool. Not only is it extremely capable in the air-to-surface arena, but it's also extremely capable in the air-to-air -air arena as well. Uh, competitive with uh, the highest threat aircraft that are out there uh, in any of our potential adversaries. For a combat environment, we can turn these jets back around in the combat really quickly. That's the top piece is the fact that it's so durable. And then the other piece is its reliability. You know, when I'm out in combat, very rarely do I experience any type of system or emergency that has me come back home. Anthony Copeland. I help launch and recover aircraft, but mainly my focus is recovering the aircraft. ABE Chief Jerome Uter. My job out here is to supervise uh, on the safe launch of aircraft off of catapults three and four. This is engine room two. This is one of our uh, engines that you see right here. Main focus is safe recovery of the aircraft. The tow hook will come down off the plane and engage the wire that's on the flight deck. Once it engages, it will move all of our components um, to stop the aircraft. The aircraft will come up and right as it approaches the catapult, the uh, catapult crew members will then take charge of the aircraft ensuring that it gets properly connected and hooked up to the catapult. And every phase is basically a check to ensure that it's safely hooked up and the catapult's ready. So it's actually about a four or five check before we actually hit that fire button right here, before the shooter actually hits the fire button. The experience is never, never gets old. I've been in maybe 16 years now, so every time I see it, it's an adrenaline rush that it, it keeps giving. That adrenaline rush that you just get when you're around that jet and around this equipment and on the flight deck, it's, you can't get that anywhere else. The aircraft is definitely very cool compared to the previous aircraft. It's definitely uh, more efficient from, from my views, quieter, moves a lot smoother than, than the previous aircraft. The maneuverability of it, the way it, it just lands so smoothly, the way it takes off, it's just like a ballet, you know, it, it moves so flawless through the sky. The unique part about the Super Hornet is it is one of the few platforms in the world that can truly do air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missions uh, at a moment's whim. We are truly the jack of all trades and I would counter a master of many of those trades as well. With the flexibility of the systems in the aircraft, the flexibility of the weapons it can carry, and in my case, the F-18 Foxtrot, the two-seat version with the additional capabilities that second crew member brings, we have a lot of uh, capabilities that other aircraft don't. 
A few things I like about the jet on a maintenance perspective, uh, the jet being new is nice. Um, a lot of mechanical, electrical mechanical things are uh, a lot more user friendly, per se. As far as the platform, it seems to be bigger, capable, and every, every package that they put on it seems, seems to work. That versatility is the answer to that. Something that is unique to the Super Hornet, uh, on our last combat cruise, we had a large number of targets to strike, so we had 20 bombs coming off two jets. That small measure there, something that many other aircraft can't do, saves time, fuel, uh, and allows us to strike a, the enemy in one, fel one pass. That's just a small microchasm of how flexible a Super Hornet is. Basically, if it's in the Navy's inventory, the Super Hornet can carry it. As far as having uh, on-the-go issues, with just the pure lack of on-the-go repairs, uh, reduces the amount of man hours that I have to do for flight schedule. Therefore, I can put more man hours towards phases. Whether it's the offensive system of the aircraft with the AP-279 ASA radar to the defensive countermeasures in the aircraft uh, and the offensive weapons, I am comfortable going up against any aircraft in the world today. Coming work feeling good every day, knowing that we're operating efficiently, safely every day, and have good aircraft, Super Hornets, it, it, it's a plus. I, I enjoy every day I come to work. As a, um, the aircraft handling officer, I have the Ouija board it's right here we're looking at. It depicts basically a tight, exact flight deck and the templates are to scale of how the flight deck is. So we basically manipulate everything that goes on out here on this Ouija board at the same time, try to keep the chaos that's happening out there controlled inside here. We still have a nice flow, comfort to the floor on the flight deck to making sure that we can efficiently operate, launch and recover aircraft over the, uh, the flight schedule. So our aircraft coming for landing, you catch the wire and come onto the wire to the run out. Probably sometimes stop somewhere around right here. But he raises his tail hook up and I'll start taxiing him out to the to turnout area. They goes to the turnout area. If we're gonna decide, do I need to take him down the line? Do I need to take him on the bottom park to another parking spot? Is he going straight to the catapult to go launch him? Or do I need to um, de-harm him, take him on the line because he's gonna require fuel and it's a quick turnaround, he's gonna go to the catapults. Is he done for the night? And then I'm gonna take him to our elevator and I'll probably send it down to the hangar bay. We operate efficiently with about 38 aircraft on here. Um, we have operate with 40 and they get tight. Having the Super Hornets, it's more efficient to work with them because just because the maintenance on those, you know, we don't, they don't break on us often and they just make the deck float smoother.